This is CS124, Lesson 2.1, Stubs and Drivers. To be successful with today's material, you need to know how to create a function and how to pass data into a function, as well as how to measure the cohesion level of a function and to create a map of a program using structured charts. Today we will be covering how to create asserts and catch many of the most common programmer problems, as well as how to use pound define and pound if def. We will also be learning how to create stub functions to make the outline of a large program. When writing a program, we make a ton of assumptions. We assume that a function was able to perform its task correctly, that the parameters in a function are set up correctly, and that our own data structures are correctly configured. Unfortunately, checking each of these assumptions is neither efficient nor quick. We use assertions to help with this problem. An assert is a check placed in a program representing an assumption the developer thinks is true. When an assert is violated, the developer is notified. An assert is a Boolean expression that evaluates false when an assumption is violated. Asserts should be specific, so that when they fire, the problem can be located quickly. Assertions have several purposes. While writing a program, asserts can help the developer identify errors resulting from a false assumption. When testers are internally looking for bugs, asserts can tell them where in the code they should start their search. However, users should never see an assert fire. Asserts are for internal errors only, not invalid user input. Similarly, file errors should not result in the firing of an assert. Both of these cases may, however, require an unrelated error statement. Using an assert requires a special library called cassert. The cassert statement is simply the command assert followed by a boolean expression contained in parentheses. The assert error message includes details like what line and function the assert that fa failed was located in. In order to run code without seeing any asserts, simply compile with the command dnde bug in all caps. This is a program set up to demonstrate how asserts work. Notice that we have our special C assert library pound included, as well as several assert statements located throughout the program. Let's go ahead and run it normally and see what it's supposed to do. So if we give him a monthly income of $600, we get a tithe of $60. Now we're going to try and trigger one of the asserts. Um, we'll give them a negative income. As expected, we got the assert triggered. It tells us which line the assert was located on and in what function. So if we come over here to main and look at line 41, we find that this is the assert that fired. And the assumption that was violated was that income was greater than zero. Now, let's run this assuming we're not debugging which means that even if I give an invalid input, the assert shouldn't fire. So we used our special dnde bug command, and we dot out, and if I put in a negative number, we do not get an assert. The program goes on through, even though it should get an assert on even a negative type. But because we told the compiler to take out all the assert statements, so to speak, we didn't get a problem. Another useful preprocessor directive is pound define. Pound define is a way to get the compiler to do a search replace throughout your file before the program is compiled. This is useful for constant values like pi. To use the pound define, you have the command pound define followed by the name of the item that you're defining and how you're defining it. So if we run this, we find that the value that we defined pi to be gets output. It's almost like a variable, except that it is constant throughout the entire program without any measure of scope depending on what function it's in. Another way to use pound define is like a function, and that would look like this. Notice that instead of having a number assigned to our so-called variable, we have a functionality. So we take the variable x and add 10 to it. Down below, we have the command add 10, which will go up to our pound define 
and pass in the parameter value. The result that we output should be 10 plus value. So as expected we got 15. 10 plus 5 would be 15. We also need to talk about something called pound if def. If def works by looking at a particular character. If that character has been defined using the pound define, then it will carry out the statements inside of it. If debug hasn't been defined by pound define, this will all be skipped. The final topic today is stub functions. As your programs grow in size, it's important that you learn how to manage a large number of functions. Stubs can help you to see what functions your program will need to use before your functions are completely finished. In addition, stubs help you figure out data flow. Stubs should contain all the parameters of a fully finished function without any of the code. Also, using stubs allows you to build your code one function at a time. As you piece together a function, compile errors are easy to manage. By comparison, if you write your code all at once, the compile errors can become overwhelming. A stub should look like this. You should have your complete function header as well as a return statement, but no other code is needed for the time being. Now you know how to use pre-processor directives and how to stub out a complicated program.